A tiny little stream of water coming out of this pipe here. What they call a pinhole leak. And that happens in all these this copper piping here. You can see it's kind of dripping down. I'm going to have to turn off the water here. What's going on guys? You Auto Scotty coming at you here. I'm in my home working really hard on the plumbing. I have to replace all of the plumbing in my in my house. So that's what I've been working on in the last couple of days. Sort of narrowly escaped a small disaster here. Uh, and uh, I've been fairly lucky the last couple of years. I've uh, done lots of plumbing in my house. I had a couple of real near misses. So let's we're going to talk about that talk about some of the issues with my home here and um, how to avoid it and what it is and how to fix it. The problem that I have in my house is with something called galvanic corrosion. When you're plumbing, you want to be really careful not to connect two dissimilar metals together because what you'll actually create is a battery. And that's especially true when you're on a well water system like, like I am. And I've got really bad well water. So there's a lot of uh, dissolved ions in there. And we, when that gets mixed in um, with a joint with two dissimilar metals, you actually create a battery. That's what a, how a battery works. That's what a battery is. You can actually measure a voltage there. But um, anyways, it actually eats at the metal. And especially true if you have brass and steel mixed together. Uh, that is really bad. And eventually, over time, the steel will disappear. It will literally disappear into the water. It's being slowly eaten and eroded away and it will gradually be not there. So I'll give you an example. Okay, here's my second well pump. I have two wells at my house. The second pressure tank. And here's a real good example. Let's look carefully here. And you can see a wet spot on the floor. Uh, and... Here we have the culprit. We have a brass T coming out of this pressure tank here. And guess what? Steel fittings. Steel fittings. And this is exactly what happened. Unfortunately, I've caught this one for a small disaster. That plug there is corroding all around the side. And I'm willing to bet that when I go to take that out, that plug is just going to crack right off in the threads and um, like the last one actually split in half and just shot out and um, so that should be uh, now I'm not sure if I'm going to replace the whole T or just the plug from my experience I'm likely not going to be able to get either one of these plugs out of there they're going to crack off and break off so I have already gone ahead and just bought a whole brand new T but it's actually not super simple to get the T out of the pressure tank either. You got to kind of grab onto it with the, and be sort of pretty gentle, but for about the same time, it's it's hard to get that out actually. So, anyways, we're gonna. This all has to be replaced as well. So, a uh, lot of work to do here. Let's have a look at uh, my pump room with my pressure tank and hot water tank that's all brand new I've got two pumps and two hot water tanks and two of everything in my home here but we're gonna have a look at my a project that I did last year and uh, if you're a fan of my channel you would have seen me replace all that stuff let's go over here into this room I've put a brand new hot water heater a new well pump jet pump and a new pressure tank. Uh, the old pump that was in here was completely destroyed by the well water. And again, it had steel, uh, steel and brass fittings, which is very, very bad. It just leaked all over the head of the pump and eventually just corroded the pump. What happened in this room is um, the old pressure tank that was here, the T coming out of it, which is brass, had steel plugs in it. That was a really, really bad thing to do. So this is all brass on brass now. So you won't have uh, too, too many problems with that. But 
with steel and brass, what it what had happened with this plug here is that it actually broke in half. It eroded so badly that it broke in half and it basically it was just a constant stream of water just shooting out of here. And it would have filled my entire basement. As you know, I got my studio down here. It would have been an absolute disaster. So all of this has been replaced and I've replaced it with PEX so to avoid that problem and i do check this uh periodically if you're wondering what that green stuff is that's called mega lock when you're putting uh threaded fittings uh it's very hard to get them to not leak so this mega lock compound is is really good so i just kind of check here every now and then and it does look okay but there is some corrosion there and I may replace the, um, it's a little bit of corrosion on the head here. It's not too bad, but I'm going to keep an eye on that. Maybe replace some of those uh, pipe clamps there. I do have to I really, really uh, look at places like this, where you've got the steel uh, dielectric nipple. There is a plastic part in there to sort of, prevent the action of galvanic corrosion so there's like a plastic insert in here as you can see we've got copper and steel it's very bad but this will eventually let go so i just keep an eye on this stuff all the time anyways that was what i did last year or sorry, I can't remember when I did that. That's a whole video on my channel. And now we have some new problems. I'll show you the first problem. So you can see there's kind of a, a wet mark here. I mopped up some water here. What that was from, this by the way is a brand new water heater. I just installed this. But there's actually a pinhole leak in that three quarter inch copper here which you see is very in very rough shape there's a lot of corrosion just a lot of that's the main line coming into the house there there's a pinhole leak that pinhole leak was leaking all over the floor here and all over my brand new water heater it went down into the uh, um, fortunately this is fairly well sealed up but uh, you see it's just it's corroding the metal already it's really really corrosive so unfortunately it didn't didn't uh, make its way to the thermostat and heating elements these are still good I've checked them both top and bottom check out good so that's good so I don't think there's damage to the water heater but it's uh, definitely not good to have that super corrosive water mixing with electricity you can see uh, how corrosive that without water is so anyways have to put that back together and we're going to cut out this section of line and replace it all with pecs going all the way back down to where the the pump is and the big project is basically that i mean if you look at this stuff it's really bad and all of these lines will eventually develop tiny little pinhole leaks and uh, cause all kinds of problems. So uh, copper is um, not going to be able to be used anymore in this house. So you can see here's a shut off valve in very rough shape that will eventually fail. So all of this stuff is going to have to get ripped out and replaced with PEX. That's what we're up to. So you can expect a video in the next couple of days of uh, all of this stuff getting replaced. I've got uh, just got back from the from the hardware store. And we've got all the stuff ready to go. And it would be nice to get the water turned on again so I can shower and wash my clothes and all that kind of stuff. That's kind of a, an interesting little problem we have here. Pro, pro plumbers, they know this stuff and they, they would never connect to dissimilar metal. But I feel like a lot of DIYers um, sort of overlook that or don't uh, aren't aware of that. As you can see from, from this uh, 
install here. So galvanic corrosion, big problem for people out in the country and in the city too. Don't connect two dissimilar metals together when you're plumbing. Uh, it's a big mistake. And uh, guys, I've got my studio down here. Uh, I'm, this is where I make my music. You can only imagine the disaster that would happen if this whole area was the flood. Uh, it would be very, very bad news. Lots of plumbing videos coming up here, and we'll see you soon. Mm -hmm.